Today, we are presenting the ultimate piano buyer's guide to the Baby Grand Piano. We've selected four pianos from the top manufacturers, and we're gonna take a listen and look and talk about the features. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We love to interact with everybody. Ted, we have some amazing pianos here today. Baby Grand Pianos, the entry line to the top four manufacturers. I'm really excited. You're going to be playing them all. This is going to be a lot of fun because it's they're all brand new pianos and they're all the entry line. Grands. So when selecting a baby grand piano, what are some important things to take into an account? Well, um, I'm going to put aside all the things involving price and shopping and all that and narrow it down to what I call five things. And it's the tone, the timbre, the touch for how it plays, and then also the timelessness of design. A lot of times they put new features in there. And the last one, I guess, would probably be taste. Mm -hmm. What you like as a player, what you like as a listener, and what an ideal piano sounds like to you that is enough to make you draw there and want to play the piano. Yeah. And so when you go out to play basically four of the same things from different manufacturers, and what are you going to get that's going to be the same? What's going to be the differences? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it's interesting to realize that these manufacturers are really saying a lot about themselves through their entry line piano. Uh, it's very hard to get an affordable piano out to the masses that has a quality instrument. And I feel like these four manufacturers do a great job of bringing you that. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we've touched on it in multiple videos before. We've talked about where your piano is made. What does that mean about the piano? And here we have two, pia or two pianos that were made in Indonesia and two pianos that were made in China. Kind of surprising when you start hearing the brand names. You hear Yamaha, you hear Kawhi, you hear Steinway, Steinway's Essex, and you hear Pearl River's Rittmuller. Rittmuller, right. So Rittmuller is the, that premium brand that's coming in from Pearl River. It's more, it's more of a recent thing. I think it happened in the last 15 years, has made its way here into the US. Uh, and it's really Pearl River saying, hey, we have a quality instrument with some Really cool features. That's and we're going to top of the line manufactured product that they make. Their, and we're, Pearl we're, Rivers Rittmuller is like their, their top piano. And we're going to get into those features when we, when we highlight that, that product. But Steinway's Essex, again, another, another story of a quality manufacturer saying, hey, this is our beginning entry product. Let's, let's pump as much as we can into it and get a quality instrument to the end consumer. And then you have Yamaha and you have Kawai, who are Japanese manufacturers but they're Indonesian plants. So really excited to show you guys today our top picks for baby grand pianos and what they sound like, what are some of the features you get with them and why you might like it and why it might be the right one for you. So the first one, Ted, that we were gonna go over, the Kawhi GL10. My personal favorite, I know you have played this piano extensively. I liked it a lot because of the, uh, um, the action that they have. In the there. Millennium yeah. 3 action. So we've done a lot of videos on Kawhi pianos. They're an incredible, incredible demonstration of what technology can mean in an acoustic instrument. They bring out some of the coolest new, pro new product designs. So the Millennium 3 action, I think, is a revolutionary thing in it the is. piano world. You get carbon fiber components in your action. We've done videos on, on this action. We've shown you guys beautiful Beautiful action. Instead of wood components, you get carbon fiber in there, over a thousand, a thousand parts in there of carbon fiber. Just allows it to be a little lighter in touch and a little bit, it's going to last a lot longer because of that carbon fiber. And other things that you like about the GL10? Well, the GL10, what I noticed is that it has a, um, a tad bit more responsive and reflective uh, part of expression and playing mm -hmm. because of the action. It does have a bit of speediness to it and it's got a certain amount of snap. And it also has the ability, at least for me, to play a little bit lighter than some of the other some of the other actions. Mm -hmm. And that's I may have a preference for the K Kawhi, but I mean that's so the Kawhi, great piano. It's uh, also manufactured directly by Kawhi in their Indonesian factory. So Yamaha and Kawhi have done this, where labor costs are extent or get more expensive every year. But being able to manufacture something um, to have more quality and more quantity output, they had to build these factories in Indonesia. And we've seen the product for 
over 20 years now, mm -hmm. and it's just incredible what you see coming out of the factory. It, it lasts a very long time. It's a great entry point, and we've sold a ton of these GL10s to beginners, to even intermediates. It's a great starting point to a baby grand piano. So we want to bring it to you guys. We're going to play it here for you. Let us know what you think. So that was the Kawai GL10, the entry line baby grand from Kawai. Secondly, we're going to talk about Yamaha's. The GB1. Yeah, the GB1K. It's a great, great little instrument. The history of the GB1, it started as a GA1 and the G1. Yamaha has had a, a couple of iterations of this piano, but the most recent one is the GB1K. It's also made in Indonesia, like the Kawai. Ted, what would you say about the Yamaha entry level baby grand? Well, I'd say that it has a lot of um, actually made in Japan components inside it is, is uh, um, particularly the soundboard, and mm -hmm. I believe the action uh, parts are all uh, built in Japan mm -hmm. and then shipped and assembled in Indonesia. Yeah, very similar to the Kawai. The Kawai exactly. does that with the Millennium 3. As, as far as a tone profile, because we are, we are listening to these different pianos, and a lot of the times asked to, it comes down to, I like a darker, warmer tone, I like a brighter, more pronounced tone, I like a softer action, I like mm -hmm. a harder action. What would you, where would you put the Yamaha on I would scale. put the Yamaha probably right about dead center, which is about where I put the Kawhi. They're both going to be on a tad bit brighter side, mm -hmm. and uh, a, perhaps uh, what I would consider a, a lighter, faster action on it. Um, from just playing experience, both the Ritmuller and the Essex seem to have more of a, a mid to a lower tone on it. They're not a real bright sounding piano, uh, but at the same time, they, they actually, when you play them, they feel like the hammers are softer. I don't know if that makes any sense, mm -hmm. but it, it gives you that feeling when you play through that, and you'll be able to hear as we go through and sample yeah. them. And so the Yamaha is a great piano. It's the GB1. They, they make it in a disc clavier version. They make it in the regular version, but just a really solid starting point for Yamaha, which is synonymous with quality. Um, they make nine-foot grand pianos. They make acoustic guitars. They make Motorcycles, uh, the, the boat engines. I, I want to say about a GB1 is that um, as a, if you're a professional rotating pianist where you go from one church to another or um, a social place like a VFW hall or something, and you go in there and they and they always mention, oh, we have a beautiful Yamaha piano. The chances are better than 50% that that piano is going to be a GB1. Yeah, it's the and a lot of these you'll start to see all over the place because they are the most affordable option from these well-known brands. Yamaha, no exception to this. A great name, manufacturer, Japanese made. That's it. So yeah, we're gonna listen to the GB1 here. It's a great option for a baby grand coming in right at five feet, just like the Kawai. So let's take a listen.
So it's a solid pick for a, for a beginner baby grand. I think Kawhi sure and is. Yamaha are, are very safe bets. They're affordable. They're synonymous with quality. Amazing Japanese manufacturers who've been making pianos for over 90 years, both of them. Just excellent, excellent choices. And these both came out of their Indonesian plants. Both of them have their own privately owned Indonesian plants that take a lot of the quality and a lot of materials from Japan and bring them down. And so that's, those are their first two picks that we're going to pick. The third one, Ted. The third one is um, a product by the Pearl River Group, Piano Group, and it's their Rittmuller, which is their top of the line. Uh, it's their preferred piano. In other words, uh, Pearl River says this is our best piano that, that, that we make above our Pearl Rivers. And you're seeing it a lot more in the U.S. nowadays. I, 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 from piano dealers around the country, Rittmuller is that supplement to either Yamaha or Kawhi or Steinway. They're really carrying this brand. There's been some uh, emphasis, and these are printed remarks that I actually read out of a, a, a book, a novel called Grand Obsession. Mm -hmm. And it's about this... Uh, customer that purchases a piano and it never sounds the way that it did in the store in their home. And so it's her obsession to find the tuner, the tech, and to get it to, to work right. But in that part of the book, she actually plays her first Rittmuller after going through all of these, and we're talking grade mm -hmm. tier one pianos. Uh, she paid like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for a different instrument and played a Rittmuller and said, I probably would have been just as happy with this piano as I would have with the other one that I purchased. It's, and they're incredible, incredible instruments. Yeah. Rittmuller, again, has a rich history. The name is actually an, an older, it's a- It's, it's a, around 1800, I think, mm -hmm. is, is when the Rittmullers first started be, uh, manufacturing components for pianos. And then I think it was soundboards and then parts. And so Pearl River purchased the name Rittmuller and started creating this premium brand for most of the U.S. markets, but the Rittmuller is just an incredible instrument, and they have the R8, which is our pick for an affordable, great entry beginner price point for a baby grand piano. You do get a little bit more of that European sound. And, and touch. It's, it's more like uh, an Austrian-manufactured mm -hmm. instrument for me, and uh, that, that part about the Rittmullers I really like. And for a beginner, that starting off the tone, I think, is a, is a little bit purer tone. It's not as bright. Yeah, no, it's, you, you'll hear it here in a second, but just you get a little bit more warmth. I, I almost think of it as a compression over the piano. Um, and, it's, and it's just a cool, it's a cool tone if you're playing a lot more, or not, not as many pop songs or rock songs. This might be a good, a good option for you. And there's a hint to our fourth selection here in a second. But Pearl River and Rittmuller is just an excellent manufacturer, and other manufacturers use them for some of their pianos. Absolutely, and it, it's strange because all four of these pianos that we're looking at, we did the Kawhi and the Yamaha first, and both of those companies are involved in the other three pianos, uh, four, two that, that we're presenting to. Yeah, so let's take a listen. This is the Rittmuller R8. It's our smallest one. It's a 411, so if you're measuring every inch and looking for that piano that might fit in the right space. This is the smallest of the four we're looking at today. It's the Rittmuller R8. We're going to hear Ted play it.
Did you notice any tone difference on that R8? It sounds very, it's it's remarkable how similar Kawhi and Yamaha kind of have this, I would I would call it a brilliant sound, like very striking, brilliant, mm -hmm. sounds great. Rit Mueller to me, it's, a li it's it's like a cloudy, it's, it's very, it's like intoxicating. You're like, oh, this sounds warm and it's really speaking to you a little bit differently than the other pianos we've played. Sort of like if you listen to a, a top 40 song with piano and vocal, and then you go and you put on an album of classical piano. Yeah, so it's, it's just, it's, tone. it's something to be looking for when you're looking for that baby grand piano. All these are gonna sound a little different. And honestly, with voicing and a good technician, you can change the sound of your piano a little bit. So these are on a scale, and if you play one Rip Mueller and play another one, they might be somewhere varying on that scale. Scale Same with Yamaha Kawai. With a, with a very good technician, you can kind of voice your instrument to be brighter, darker, but within the spectrum of the woods and the materials used, you're gonna get a, an overall warmer tone from the, uh, from the Rip Mueller. And so that was the R8, comes in at 411, manufactured in China by Pearl River. Just a great entry level option for a baby grand. It's fitting because Pearl River actually makes our next one. They're so, the subcontractor. The Pearl River Group is the subcontractor for Steinway and Sons. So Steinway, everyone knows Steinway. Okay, most everyone knows Steinway. When you think of a piano, when you think of the American piano, you think of a concert stage, in your head, you close your eyes, and a lot of times people see Steinway, Steinway and Sons. And just a rich history of being this powerful manufacturer here in the US since the 1800s. A family came from Germany, Built their, built their piano factory here in New York, and really with that American dream, built an entire piano manufacturing plant right there in downtown in, New York. In downtown New York, and then the, out in Long Island. I think they moved it out across the river. And so as, as a lot of manufacturing in America went, prices increasingly went up. They were known for quality. They were this great American brand. 50, 60 years later, 100 years later, here we are, and they're one of the last few manufacturers left in this country to make pianos. There's three American manufacturers left. One of them is Steinway. But Steinway wanted to have an affordable option, a beginner piano for the everyday beginner buyer. And it's something that just cannot be practically done uh, with manufacturing processes here in the United States. Mm -hmm. The labor cost is too high. Mm -hmm. And uh, then everything subsequent to labor, like delivery costs, yeah. and all these other things start adding to it. So along the line, they came up and designed a couple of pianos uh, that they would have other manufacturers build for them. And one of their lines is the Essex line, and then the other one is the Boston line. Mm -hmm. And it's strange because we're comparing these manufacturers, Yamaha and Kawhi, but Kawhi actually is the subcontractor for the Boston piano from Steinway. They are. And Essex, uh, had contracted with the Pearl River Group, which at one time was 50% or more assistance from Yamaha about 10, 10 12 years ago. Yeah, so and it's, so it's you have these limited number of manufacturers that are building things for other other uh, piano manufacturers. Yeah, and so well. we have the S6. It's called the EGP155C. Very long name. The 155 is in centimeters. How long it is? It comes into about five foot two. So this is actually the bigger. The biggest, I think, of all the ones we're playing here today, um, and it's from S6, which really a nice feature. One of the ones people kind of gravitate to is on the fallboard. There's a design by Steinway and Sons, and a lot it of says times that on the on the label it says it right there. And I mean, we we are drawn to branding naturally mm -hmm. as humans, and a lot of the times people see Steinway and they're and they're immediately drawn to it. And there's a premium to be paid with that. Sure. Um, and so this is probably going to be one of the more expensive ones of these four. Which brings us to price. Um, we haven't really talked about price a lot here. But I know that all four of these are gonna be, for the most part, they're all in the same ballpark. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might get a, you know, a nicer looking bass hit out of one of them than another, but they're all gonna be in, in approximate same price range. Yeah, and so this is a quality, quality instrument, the Essex. Um, and we wanted to bring it here in the comparison because these are really the most popular bought baby grand pianos on the market today here in America and just incredible value in a lot of them. So this is the Essex, it's the EGP Essex Grand Piano 155C. We're gonna take a listen to it here. Let us know what you guys think.
you know, Patrick, after playing that Essex after the Rip Mueller, I, I kind of see those two as sort of sounding and playing a bit the same, at least tone wise. Mm -hmm. And the Yamaha and the Kawhi are kind of like the it, same too. I'm glad we grabbed these four. It's kind of hard to get them all in, wrangled up in the same room. Mm -hmm. But once you do, it's really incredible to hear. These are the top four best selling baby grands new on the market and just incredible instruments, but being able to say, hey, this one plays and sounds like this, and this one sounds and plays like this. That's the best way to compare pricing, too, mm -hmm. uh, is like actually play this one, this one, that one, and that one, and then you think, you know, they're all kind of cost about the same, and I, you know, everyone's got to make that decision. Yeah, and so the elephant in the room is what do, they, what do they cost? What's the price on these? And it's complicated because as a piano dealer, the, the de dealer agreements say you can't talk about price, but there are some manufactured prices online and that's the retail price. All of these pianos are gonna fall under that $20,000 retail price. But of course, if you go to the local dealer, if you go talk to a piano dealer, a lot of times they have sale prices on these pianos. And you'll realize that a lot of these pianos are similarly priced. And so that's why we grouped these ones together here today. Um, again, it's the Essex, the EGP-155C. We have the Yamaha GB1K. We have the Rittmuller R8. And we have the Kawhi GL10. Again, I think the GL10 for me, just the action is a little bit above the rest of these. You get that carbon fiber action, just a beautiful Millennium 3 action. So smooth. It's something they use on that model and they go all the way up to their nine foot concert grand and still use that Millennium 3 action. Just a great piano. Ted, what did great you think piano. playing I, these I, today? I love playing them all. They're, mm -hmm. they're all great, they're all different. And uh, I do have a preference for the Kawhis and the Millennium 3 action is something that I've, I've dreamt about, I've read about it, you know, before, and it's, they're just really wonderful. Yeah, just an incredible arrangement of instruments today. I'm, I'm glad you guys joined us today for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, this is Ted Barcelona. I'm Patrick Marr with Alamo Music Center. We're here in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. We love to bring you guys new content. Leave us some comments. We love to interact with you. And thank you again for watching. <laughs>